I love the smell of the workshop. The different woods produce a variety of aromas just like a bouquet of flowers. You know, once you get sawdust in your blood, there's just no getting rid of it. I hope it's like that for you when it comes to Bible teaching. You just can't get enough of it. When you enjoy something so much, you enjoy all the things that go with it. I love tools. I can do real financial damage in a tool store. You know, the answer to the question, how many tools are enough, is at least one more. The tool we're going to look at today is the brace and bit. The brace and bit is a valuable tool in our workshop, but sadly today it's not used by many craftsmen. The brace and bit dates back to the early 15th century, and there were minor modifications to, it design, to its design, but by around 1865 the brace and bit looked and operated just as it does today. The main advantage for boring holes over the earlier tools was that it gave a continuous and positive turning movement to the bit. The different parts of the brace and bit are the head and the handle and then the bow or the saddle. Uh, down here we have the ratchet and the chuck. The brace applies a force uh, to the bit by the rotation of the frame in a clockwise direction. The amount of space that this takes up or this action is from here to here is known as the sweep. Now the size of the brace is given in terms of this measurement. This particular brace has a 10 inch sweep, 5 inches here and 5 out here, and it's probably the most common versatile size that you find. When the brace was developed, it incorporated an entirely new scientific principle, the crank. The crank is a mechanical device with a unique characteristic. It changes reciprocal motion back and forth the arm of the carpenter into rotary motion. Uh, the resulting mechanical advantage requires a slower rotational speed, but it produces considerable torque. The slower rotational speed means that the brace can bore precise, accurate holes. Now in a day when we're likely to just grab our cordless drill and quickly drill our hole, the brace and bit can accurately and faithfully bore a precise, vertical hole. Faith is like the brace and bit. We keep it in our workshop but we don't often use it. Faith and obedience are closely intertwined. Faith is recognizing God's will in a given situation and acting on it. Now I think the key to this is taking the time to recognize God's will. We tend to size up a situation, sort of a quick triage, and we try to determine if we can handle it on our own or if we need to take it to God. We evaluate our visible, available resources to see if we can handle it, and then we launch off to do our best. The problem here is that the people around us only see our best. They never get to see God at work. We get the glory for whatever is accomplished, and God has no part in it. Hebrews 11 tells us, that without faith it is impossible to please God. As leaders, faith must be active and visible in our lives. Not only do we want to please God, but we want our students to experience God's power, God's provision, God's glory. Faith is so important in our leader toolbox. We are justified by faith. We are saved by faith. We are sanctified by faith and cleansed by faith. Our hearts are purified by faith. We have access to God's grace by faith. We can move mountains by faith. The results of our walking by faith, whether it's life's common experiences or the major crises we may encounter, far exceed what we can produce apart from faith. When you're in the workshop, 
Reach for your brace and bit to bore that precise, accurate hole. When you're in the workshop of life, reach for faith. After all, it's backed up by all the wisdom and power and the grace of God.